Hello and welcome to Security Management 201. I am Professor Wool and today we're going to be talking about how to structure network objects to plan for future policy growth. So imagine that you need to ha you have uh, uh, servers in your data center. You could probably categorize your, your servers according to multiple criteria such as the operating system that they're using, maybe it's a Linux server, uh, the function that they're playing, so maybe it's a uh, uh, MySQL database, uh, the zone, the network segment that the server is going to be located in, so maybe it's in the blue zone. Now each one of these categories actually implies the requirement for certain types of network access. For instance, if it's a Linux server, then you probably want these types of access. So you want to allow DNS access, you want to allow SSH for the IT administrators to access that device, whereas if it were a, a Windows server, then you would require other types of access. Similarly, if it's a database server, then you would probably need uh, SQL nets access from the DBA uh, workstations. And if it's placed in the blue zone, then you want to allow access from the blue zone security operating system center so that they can troubleshoot. So categorization implies network access in many cases. What you can do is uh, use your firewall management platform to construct templates that implement these uh, relationships. And to do that, you would use your vendor's network object definitions. So most firewall vendors in their management platform let you define named objects. And then you could define an object for, let's say, your Linux servers and list all the IP addresses of all the Linux servers that you have in your data center. Similarly, you have a, a definition called uh, DB servers and list all the IP addresses of the database servers that you have in your data center. You can, of course, have the same IP address appear in multiple different objects because one server is both a Linux server and a database server and something else. Um, once you have these network objects defined, you write your rules according to the templates of access that you need. So you would have a predefined rule allowing access from all the Linux servers to the corporate DNS using DNS and you allow uh, the IT staff to access the Linux servers using SSH and so on and so forth. And the advantage of writing your policy this way using network objects that come from these uh, categories is that when you have a new server being added to your data center, what you really need to do is just to add the IP address to the appropriate objects. And if you've done that correctly, then you don't need to touch the policy rules because they're already in place and all the network access that is required because it's a Linux server or because it's in the blue zone, all that access is already baked into the firewall policy rules. Which means that you have to do less work and your policy is more compact and allows you to grow um, more quickly. Now there's a couple of things that you need to bear in mind if you start using this kind of structure. The first is discipline. You really need to be disciplined in how you put in rules in your firewalls and make sure all the team members are aware of the mapping between, uh, let's say, operating system category to the object name in the database so that when a new server is added, they remember to add that IP address to that predefined network object rather than just add more rules to the policy. So discipline and training of staff is important. A bigger challenge sometimes is what happens when you have a multi-vendor multi environment. So if you have firewalls from different vendors, each, each vendor supplies their own uh, firewall policy management platform and typically you cannot share network object definitions across vendors. Uh, so if you want to use this type of template approach, you really need to define your Linux server's object once on vendor number one and again on vendor number two, uh, preferably using the same name and it's really important to get the content exactly the same on all systems, otherwise you get diverging definitions and the rules will not be consistent and you've lost the advantage that you're trying to achieve. Uh, so if you have a multi-vendor environment, as many organizations do, then of course you need even more discipline. And you also might want to consider third-party tools that 
are multi-vendor inherently and can let you see a holistic view of all the definitions of all network objects across your whole estate. Uh, and with such assistance, you can um, uh, get the same results and have something uh, automated um, ensure that you don't make mistakes. Thank you for your attention and see you next time.